Devon is a fully autonomous AI software developer by Cognition and in this video we're going to look at six different use cases, four different risks that you need to be aware of and the easiest way to get access to it. Cognition Labs just announced Devon, the world's first autonomous AI programmer. In this video we will look at six different examples. The first will be the HTML JavaScript one, then we'll go on to a couple of Python examples, one for building AI models, the other for making money on Upwork. After that we'll look at a C++ example with unit testing, moving into Rust where we'll look at adding a feature into an existing repo. Finally look at the React game of life example. I'll then show you how to get access to Devon, plus a simple tip that might make it easier for you to get it quicker. After that, we'll look at four different challenges to do with Devon or AI programmers in general, and that'll be around the areas of cybersecurity, creativity, the complexity of the software development lifecycle, and the big issue, will it take my job? Let's have a look at what Devon can do. And the first example is about creating secret messages within images. And the developer that used this, Sarah, had asked the question, can you read this URL? It's an article and follow the instructions. Devon has said, absolutely, I can do that. Do you want me to generate images and what text would you like it to have? And she's put in Sarah, Devon and Cognition. Now Devon has come over and opened up the article that was given and from there followed the instructions from the article. It started writing a bit of code and installing some setup and one of the things that happened was it ran into an error during setup. You can see down in the bottom left that it went off to a different website to figure out what the problem was before writing code. It was able to generate this image with Sarah and it moved on to create one with Devon and another one with Cognition. The next example is using Devon to train an AI model. And what they've done is they've got this repo here about Clora, efficient fine tuning of quantized LLMs. And they've taken the URL and put it into a prompt within Devon saying, can you fine tune a 7B Llama model using, and then they just provide the link. There should be instructions in the readme file. So there's the assumption that it'll go off and read the readme file. Now from there, it's figured out that it needs to clone the repo, set up the environment using pip, and then it followed the instructions in the readme file. During setup, it ran into a problem and it needed to reinstall the bits and bytes for CUDA compatibility. It was able to start running the training of the model. Training went for about an hour and at the end you can see the progress with decreasing loss indicating successful model fine tuning. This next example is really interesting. It's about adding a feature to an existing open source repo and the repo is written in the Rust programming language it's called mprox and what it does is monitor services that are running or processes. But you can see here there's this message called down 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 and someone wants to make this a bit clearer to see exactly what's going on. Now there was already an issue in the issues register of the repo so they thought can we use this just to build the code that's needed. A simple question, write a fix for this issue, they've pasted in the URL, do not commit or push your changes. It's gone and read the readme file for mprox, it's installed the dependencies and then it's decided to use a browser and open up the issue that needs to be implemented. From this it's been able to write a little bit of Rust code, now it ran into a few issues and then decided to go off and read the Rust documentation to figure out how to resolve the issue. From there you can see the old version of the user interface and then the new version with a little bit more clarity around what is actually down. After that it was able to create a pull request. Now this next example is really exciting. It's firstly an Upwork side hustle, but the other thing about it is it's using a vision AI model. If we look at the job ad, what we've got here is make inferences with a computer vision model. Now the company that posted the ad pays around 23 US dollars an hour for the code being written. What they've done is they've included this repo to use as a reference. So we've got the repo here. We read through this and we can see that there's road crap detection challenge 2020 so it's not even recent and then there's a whole lot of examples including checkpoints. Basically it's trying to 
identify where there are cracks in the road pavement. Now, rather than reading or understanding this particular repository, all the prompt is, I am looking to make inferences with the models in this repository. Paste in the URL and say, please figure it out. Devin goes ahead and makes a plan of action. We've got these things like clone a repository, read the documentation, so on and so on. It starts setting up the repo. It asks a few questions over on the left. It ran into an issue. You can see that in the red and it's gone and figured out what the problem was. The problem was a dependency was out of date. So it's gone and fixed that and then downloaded sample images. It's then started to do an interactive debugging on the code that it wrote. You can see that it wrote some console logging to solve some problems. It also removed the console logging before deploying the final code. It was then able to come up with a fix for little issues that were going on and then ran the image model. From there, we get these outputs where we can see that cracks in the road are being used on new images. This really interesting C++ example is based on a repo for a competitive programming setup. Someone has come up with an error stating that in a particular scenario, an edge case, the code doesn't actually work. The programmer involved has gone and manually made a change to the code here, but now he wants to put in some unit tests to see if everything's working okay. He's come over to Devon and said, I need a test basically read my repo, have a look at the function involved and start thinking about what you need to do. While he's doing that, he's writing the actual requirements for the test. So he's listed them all here. Devon has started writing the code and it ran into a compiler error in what it had implemented. So it figured out how to resolve that. You can see the fix in here. It's an include statement. And basically it was able to get the test running. But because this was a function with many sorts of values that needed to be tested, the programmer then went on to say, can you do a brute force testing? Can you iterate over many different combinations of values? Let's just see if the tests work here. One of the examples failed. Now with that being uncovered, Devon was able to go through, put in a bit of console logging to see what is the particular problem going on here. And it found in one particular example, there was a negative number. It knew it needed to be fixed. It wrote a bit of code to fix that particular edge case. And then finally the code ended up running. Last coding example is about setting up the game of life in a React project. We've got this prompt here in Devon. It's gone through and started to create a React application and set up the front end environment in React and Chakra UI. It's also added the P5.js library. It went straight on to deploying this code to Netlify and we got to see just what would happen when it rendered. One of the things I was confused of when looking at the example initially was this is great, but why? Where's the actual code for the game? I looked a little deeper into it. I could see that what they were doing was using code from the P5.js. I'm assuming Devon went and found all this particular code. And then later on, the developer in the example starts showing a little bit of the code behind the scenes. Here we've got the Game of Life code written in JavaScript. And from there, he had a bug that needed to be sorted. See on the left, 180. There was a bit of a freeze at the three second mark. Devon went in, resolved that particular problem, but then he asked for it to make it a little bit more interactive. Can I click in areas and have the game of life start? Here's the game at the beginning. We got Devon and then it starts expanding out as it progresses. And then clicking with the mouse, we start to see new areas of the game of life being drawn in different places. Now, if you want to access Devon for yourself, what you need to do is go over to Cognition Labs and you'll see this little form here where you can join the waitlist. Now, when you're filling it out, it's important that you give them good details because there will be a selection criteria with this. One of the fields just under the company is a prompt that you need to write for what sort of application you want to build. Now, the one I did is here. I basically wanted content creation application using GPTs. But if you want to create your own prompt from scratch, what I suggest is you look at a prompt like this. Can you write a prompt for an AI programming bot? So this is not a prompt for GPT, this is a prompt for 
Devon in this case. The goal is to turn and whatever your goal happens to be, I've then given it a little bit of context about what the software needs to do with a couple of examples. After that, I put in some constraints. So in this case, note you don't need to write prompts for the GPTs. This is to run locally. So I've told it the architecture or at least the platform that it's running on. Lastly, want Devon to actually interact with me. I don't always want programming bots to go off and do their own thing. If you write a prompt similar to this, but fill in your own details, it will then go and create a detailed prompt that you can give as part of the application form. Let's address the elephant in the room, and that's the risk and fears of working with AI autonomous programmers and the big one is going to be cyber security. There's a big issue at the moment with repos on GitHub being cloned and then having malicious code added into them. How would it be if the bot that you're using happens to download something that has malicious code in it and it runs locally or it introduces it into the program you're using? The next issue is just the creative limitations of working with AI programmers. They just really don't get a lot of more esoteric issues. So what language do I want to use? What architecture? What patterns do I want to use? Have I thought of this particular edge case? These are the sorts of things that the programmer really needs to be involved or other sorts of designers and testers. That then leads into the software development life cycle and the complexity, especially in an enterprise. Like, how would it be if two different AI bots, one's writing it for one programming language versus another, another one's using RESTful APIs while another one's using gRPC? There's all sorts of issues and there can be monetary issues. Let's say a bot decides to use open AI endpoints, another one uses Google endpoints, and suddenly the business units are going, how do we pay for this? Are we paying for this one or are we paying for this one? These are the sorts of problems that need a lot of guidance. Then when we look at the issue of job displacement, I think what we're going to see is this idea where you'll have lots of computer programmers, humans, whether they be designers, testers, software developers, and all they're doing is working hand in hand with AI bots. I'm Happy Dave, and if you see AI automation bots and GPT as a solution, which is how I've felt for the last 18 months where I put all my energy in here, then come and check out my GPT Academy. This is where I'm helping people in small groups, either with prompt engineering or prompt engineering for coding.